Welcome to In 5 Minutes. Let's quickly understand what is a dynamic circuit. Let's first understand the general diagram and then from there on we will go and understand dynamic inverter NAND and NOR. So dynamic circuits has to have something common to static and something common to pseudo and still should be able to overcome the problem. So here is a proposal. The pull down network is again going to be exactly same like our static circuit because that was never a drawback and hence we kept the same pull down network for yes that's correct for zero and more circuits as well only thing what we do now here is we replace the pmos of zero and more circuit with a pmos whose input is not grounded but we call that input as nothing but five and then this is the output it's as simple as that so if i have to make let's see how does this ever the problem which we fade in ratioed circuits or zero and MOS circuits. If I have to make a dynamic inverter, what I have to do is very, very simple. Similar to static, I'm just drawing a static inverter here for your reference. Static inverter, we had PMOS and MOS and put shorted output VDD ground. So pull down is going to be exactly the same. So let's make it correct. And the pull up will have a PMOS whose input is phi, V out and A. Now see what's going to happen is if I make my phi equal to 0 and A is 0, my output is nothing but 1. If you remember inverter is nothing but A, Y, 0, 1, 1, 0. So are we getting what we are destined or what we are looking at? A 0, V out 1. Cool. Now see what's going to happen again. If phi is equal to 0 and a is equal to 1, what's going to happen is v out will again pmos being on because phi is 0 and a1 and mos on. So this is a similar problem which we face in zero and mos circuits or ratioed logic circuits where there is again a fight. So we want to avoid this problem as well. So what we are going to do is very very simple in dynamic circuits. Apart from the pull down network and my PMOS transistor, which has an input phi, what we will also do is we'll add an additional NMOS transistor at the bottom. Let's see what does that mean. And call this transistor its input as phi as well. So now my schematic or the general diagram becomes like this. This transistor is called a footer transistor. What does it do? Okay, I will explain you this on the next slide. Hope you have enjoyed it. Stay tuned and take care.